Rest in peace. Derek, what's up? LWJ24, what's up? Kenny Matthews, what's up? T Hill, what's up, y'all? I'm going to turn the camera around in just a minute. Little Roz, what's up? Yo to you. Like, I hope you got some rest today because you definitely looked tired last night. Chris Main, what's up? So, Dr. T, my auntie, what's up? What's up? What's up? Hey, let me turn it around so you guys can see. See me? Hi, 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 hi. Texas Lefty, you guys can share if you want to. Apostle Lance, God bless you. Um, I love you, Apostle Lance. You guys, please follow him. He's um, totally, totally amazing and totally awesome. Um, I draw, or I'm not sure what that is. What's up? NWO1, you don't want to invite your followers. Like, well, what I'm talking about, you need to invite them. Like, please invite them. Oh, Farah, you changed your name. God bless you. Thank you for inviting your followers, Kenny Matthews. Um, Pastor Patricia, what's up? Go ahead and share. Cat in the Roof, um, what's up, what's up, what's up? Marcelli Smith, I like your name, that's pretty cool. Musical Freak, I like your name. What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm not going to say anything crazy. It's just something that is um, truth, and <laughs> I don't think we're even talking about it. When's the last time you guys heard somebody talk about HIV and AIDS? Do you remember? Blessings to you, Apostle Lance. Like... I um, was sitting up looking at Facebook and I need to message you. <laughs> but when's the last time you guys heard somebody talk about HIV and AIDS? Hello, Durab, Durab, what's up? Miss Bianca, good afternoon to you also. It's been a while, right? Never, cat on the roof, almost never. It's really good. Like, um, yeah, we really don't talk about HIV and AIDS anymore. I remember when I was um, coming up in school, I was definitely like shook. Like, I was scared. Like, and so um, I was thinking um, back in May, I was like, nobody really talks about HIV and AIDS anymore. And it's a problem for the black community. Um, I'm gonna give you some statistics on HIV and AIDS. Michelle J. Miller, God bless you. Thank you, Durup Durup. I definitely agree, it's definitely needed. I was talking to someone probably in the beginning to make Michelle J. Miller, God bless you, love you, excited for your TBN encounter, can't wait to see it. You guys, please follow Michelle J. Miller if you're not already following her. She's an awesome, um, awesome, awesome, awesome person. She's a prophet of God, not only that, like um, her mountain is, is media and not only media, but law. She's actually an attorney. Isn't that dope? How dope is that? Like. <laughs> Yeah, but um, Hulk Hogan, it's okay. Thank you. We're gonna um, we're gonna love everybody on here. I appreciate you. I got bodyguards in the room. Appreciate y'all. Uh, media blackout on HIV and AIDS. I agree. Like a media blackout is on it. Like it's crazy. So I was talking to somebody, and like man, I was like nobody's really talking about HIV and AIDS. And I was like this is crazy. Like when I was coming up, I remember that. You know, we learned about it. We talked about it. Um, you know, I was I was totally scared of it. Um, I've been tested for it. I actually, because of my awareness about the disease, I've actually been tested, I believe, twice for um, for HIV. So, like, you definitely got to do that, especially if you've had sex before. You know, you definitely need to do that. And in some rare cases, it can be passed through other means other than sexual contact, which I'll talk about a little bit on here today but not very long after I said that and made that statement I saw a small news report it was real real small it wasn't even big it's not even a lot of news buzzing about it and it talked about Atlanta and um, I heard about when Atlanta said yes Atlanta um, yes Atlanta is having a major major um, epidemic um, a major major epidemic I think that the media is told what they can cover it's um, her thought well we're gonna talk about it today like um, we can talk about what we want to talk about so we're definitely gonna put it out there but Atlanta is in a major um, major major epidemic um, they're comparing it to that of countries in Africa and Africa is a third world country um, you know they don't have access to as many resources as we do yes thank you for inviting your um, people Michelle J Miller I really really appreciate it and whomever else invited thank you all and if I wasn't able to personally greet you God bless you thank you for coming on thanks for being in the room but um, you know we, America has many more resources than than Africa does but Atlanta is compared to that and nobody's talking about it 
Um, so I was really, really shocked at that. I actually caught my nephew. He's 17. I caught him outside. I caught him outside. Hey, you. I caught him outside and um, it was him and his friend that had graduated high school at the time. My nephew has since graduated from high school. He just did, but he's still 17. But um, And then it was somebody that's older and this guy just turned 21. And I asked him, I was like, when's the last time somebody talked to you guys about HIV or talked to you about age? And they're like, Ain't nobody talking about that. And I'm like, what? I said, well, let me talk to you about it real quickly. And I pulled out my computer and I showed them this map that the CDC has put out, which is the Center for Disease Control. And the map showed the United States and it showed all of the areas that are primarily affected. And the areas that were in red and lit up are the areas that had the most cases of those diagnosed with HIV and AIDS. And that's actually in the southeastern part of the country. Most of it's in the southeastern part, which is where North Carolina is, Georgia is, Florida. All of these places are lit up. New York is um, lit up. The areas that really weren't affected much is like the Midwestern part of the United States. But you guys, um, if you go on my Facebook, Lola Kabaya, if you go on my Instagram, Lola Kabaya, I actually have a map on there. You can see it there because I don't um, remember the website. But then I looked at Atlanta. Atlanta is most concentrated and nobody's really talking about it. And every one in 51 person there, somebody mentioned it earlier, every one in 51 person has a chance of getting HIV and AIDS just off of being in Atlanta because there's so many people there that have it. So what does that mean to us? That means that you go into a room and you count off 51 people. One of those people in that room has HIV or AIDS at minimum. At minimum, more people than that can have them, can have it. But that's what it actually means and that's really big and nobody's talking about it. So I just went and pulled up some statistics on it. And I actually got this from, um, yeah, um, I actually, blessings to you. I actually got this from, it is scary. It's very scary. What's even more scary is that nobody's talking about it. So we have children out here that could potentially be at infected, um, you know, and affected by it. And nobody's talking to them. Nobody's, um, you know, nobody's giving them information that they need to protect them, which knowledge is the main thing. My people perish from lack of knowledge. Like we need to give people knowledge. Like, so we need to talk about it. And you guys getting this information, you go out and share it and you go out and spread it with others. But, um, on, um, AIDS, um, dot gov, which is a government website. I agree. You definitely need to still get tested. Um, but who it actually affects more, I'm going to talk about that Hulk Hogan. It's talked about an LGBT community versus heterosexual. In the beginning, they initially just thought it was like um, a gay disease. Um, but it's not. It goes, um, hold on, let me charge, plug up my phone really quickly because it's going dead. But it's not, um, it affects everyone. It actually affects everyone. Okay. So how you can get HIV or AIDS through blood, of course. Semen and pre-seminal fluid. I'm sorry if this conversation gets a little bit too graphic for some of you all. Rectal fluids, vaginal fluids, and actually breast milk. Um, it's most commonly spread in the in the United States through sexual behavior and then also through ne needle or syringe use. There are some slim cases where you can still get HIV from weird stuff. Like guess what? Kissing. So if it's like some deep mouth kissing and some deep tongue action going on, you're getting all up in there and stuff, and someone with HIV or AIDS is infected and they potentially have like sores in their mouth and it's blood come out, you can potentially get it that way. Um, it also can happen towards, um, okay, <laughs> thank you. It also can happen through like um, blood transfusions, which that has actually, those cases have declined because there's such rigorous testing that goes on. Um, so it, it can also happen other ways. Um, the, the gay and bisexual community and men make up the largest population of those that are affected. Now, when I was reading reports, it said that only, I think it was, there's 2% of gay and bisexual men that makes up, thank you, thank you, thank you, God bless you. 2% um, of um, gay and bisexual men that actually make up the population of gay bisexual men in the United States. 
So it's only 2%, but the most, uh, most of them are affected by HIV and AIDS. And it's only because of the type of sex that they have. Um, HIV and AIDS, the risk is increased when you have like anal sex, but not only gay and bisexual men do that. Other people engage in that type of sex. So that is something that increases the risk and it affects them a lot, the most out of everybody that's infected. But the big thing is, is they don't make up a lot, um, large population of the United States. So it's just hitting their community hard because this is the type of sex they have that increases that risk. Now, um, I could go into more details about that, but you guys go on the website and look because depending on your position in anal, um, when you're having anal sex, it actually increases your risk too. If you're the one that's the recipient, it goes up. If you're the one providing it, it goes down, which is interesting. Now from there, it actually affects African Americans the most next, and then it hits the women, and it actually hits African American women and Latino women. So it's affecting everybody. It's not just um, one group, but what I'm more shocked at is the fact that we're not talking about it, especially with Atlanta being what it is, um, that I can go out and, and count off 51 people and in and, in those 51 people, someone there is going to have HIV or AIDS. It's just crazy. And we're not educating anybody on it. So I'm giving you all this information today just so that you can go out and share it with, um, with someone else and begin to educate like your family members, those people that you love and care about. Um, I'm practicing celibacy. Not everyone is doing that. And if I ever get remarried again, I was married before. If I ever get remarried again, like, first of all, I'm going to have to hear from God. Like he's going to have to be like, you know, you can go ahead and do it. That's the one. And I'm going to be like, cool. Um, and then from there, like, we're still going to get tested like together we're going to get tested and that's going to be that. <laughs> and then I'm going to trust God that he's not going to part me, partner me with someone that's going to have any hidden issues and want to do anything else. I have three grown straight and married men. I will not be ignorant. For some reason, it's still taboo. Wise decision. First time on with you. Thanks for coming on. Um, yeah, and I was wondering why we're not talking about it. And even Charlie Sheen, like he was diagnosed with it um, recently. I believe this year he came out and talked about Taz, what's up? Blessings to you. He came out and talked about it. He was diagnosed with it. And then I thought, I said, well, HIV and AIDS, really like it doesn't look as bad as it used to look like um you know they have medications that can help and um you know people are living a lot longer with the disease when it first came out they didn't know what was going on um and it really really was um tearing people up what are my thoughts on homosexual churches hmm um give me a more specific question why he said it late though. But um, that can only be my, my only thought and my only reason why like we're not talking about it because we don't think, yeah, they just swept Charlie under, under the rug and hopefully he'll campaign about it. But the only reason why people don't really talk about it because people are living longer and it's not really seen as crazy, but people will have AIDS and not tell you about it. If you go on and, and look it up, um, look online and look up cases where people have been charged with knowingly giving AIDS to other people, like you'll see it's out there. So you can't even think that, you know, people are just going to try to do something um, right and, and tell you if they have it. No, you can't trust that. You can't trust that. You need to, um, if, if you can, please practice celibacy. <laughs> if you, if you can't, then um, man, may God help you, you know, but um, please look up some of the information I was reading and I was just weeping like and crying. It was just really, really 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 sad it was just really really sad and some people can't afford to get the me medication um, and one reason that that it affects rural areas more um, and African Americans more is because of the the socio-economic classes and um, poverty rates like when people are in areas that don't have access to a lot of um, funding doctors they, they don't have that ability to go out and get the help that they need you know what I'm saying so ends up affecting those more but we just got to talk about it we just got to talk about it well God bless you Dion keep waiting <laughs> keep waiting and I'm just gonna um, share this with you all like um, if you are single and you know you feel like you gotta have sex like it's it's really not that good you know what I'm saying like 
um, most of the time it's not even going to be like what you thought it was going to be. You know, <laughs> It's really not going to be what you thought it was going to be. And God reminded me of something um, one day um, and just randomly, like just randomly. I'm just, I don't even know what I was doing. And um, he reminded me of like my, I'm so serious, my relationship with my ex-husband. And he was like, reminded me of what that part of our relationship was like. And I was like, wow, you know, when you're in the covenant of a marriage and God is honoring that, like he makes everything better. You know what I'm saying? With everything that's going on in the world, those five minutes, come on, those five minutes ain't worth it. And if you can wait until you're connected with the one God wants you to connect with and he's honoring, um, you know, you're in the covenant of a marriage, like he's going to honor that. And trust me, that sex is going to be way better than any sex you can have outside of covenant. I'm just being honest with you. So just wait. <laughs> it's going to be better. Trust me. He reminded me. He's like, you remember this? I was like, I do remember that. Why was it like that? And I was like, oh, we were married and you honored that. But I'm telling you, like outside of that, like it's really not even going to be what you think it is. Like if you can just hold off and just go sit at a friend's house, um, do something and you, you, you'll get over that feeling for the moment and then and just wait. And, and when God places you in a marriage and he's honoring that covenant and you do it, you're going to be like, I'm so glad I waited. It's amazing, okay? <laughs> but that's it. You guys, please go on um, the CDC's website, cdc.gov. Um, you can also go on aids.gov. But why be burned when he gave us the option that pleases him? I'm not sure what you were saying. I'm sorry. No, I don't have HIV and AIDS. Thank God I don't have it. Oh, and if you guys go to my um, Instagram page, Lola Caballo, or either my Facebook um, page, you can actually see a map and it shows the areas that are most populated with HIV. But if you go and just Google online, like Atlanta HIV 2016, um, you'll find it and you'll be able to get some information on it. But just go out there and, and help to get people educated. Somebody asked a question about what I think about like homosexual churches. If, if you're... Um, I like to get more insight on what you're asking before I respond back, but um, please connect with me on Facebook. You can message me there. I do have a website. My website is actually called thesmokingprofit.com. Um, awesome, thesmokingprofit.com. If you go and look at my bio here, the link is directly there, but you can contact me that way. Um, sometimes I'm a little bit slower responding to emails there. I'll definitely get back soon. Um, I don't smoke, <laughs> but that's a cool question you asked me. I appreciate you having the boldness to ask me that question. But yeah, thank you to your old Turner for putting that up there. But um, yeah, go check it out, thesmokingprofit.com. And um, whoever asked me that question, um, please message me on Facebook and we can go there. But um, God bless, um, you know, my homosexual brothers and sisters. God loves them too. And just like with anything, um, you know, um, it, just like with anyone on this earth, we all have something and God just wants to to love us all and show us all his best life for us. So that's the best I can, response I can give you right now without knowing specifically what you were, um, what you were talking about. Um, okay. All right, guys, I'm getting off of here. Thank you for joining. My Facebook name is actually the same Lola, L O L A, Kabaya. Oh, you did put it up. Yeah. Make sure you message me. Kabaya, C A B A Y A. Okay. Love you guys. Thanks for coming on. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye. God bless you too. <laughs> Thank you.